Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Proof of Work Coin News. I am your host, Coinology. We are currently at 517 subscribers, trying to get to 600. If you have a moment, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any comments about what we're talking about today or something you'd like to hear about in the future, drop your comments down below. Let's jump over to the Proof of Work crypto market. Currently, we do have Bitcoin moving down. Uh, that's moving most of our tokens down as well. Uh, we currently have everything down about 2 to 6%. GRS token is the only outlier doing a positive 8%. Today I wanted to talk about the future of GPUs and as far as uh, any kind of cryptocurrency mining that uses GPUs. Um, recently I feel like there has been a lot of misinformation um, and especially around pumping different coins, uh, different networks. Keep in mind none of this is financial advice um, and this is not to take anybody down or anything like that. It's just to talk about some trends that I have seen. Uh, over the last couple of years of crypto mining. And uh, so recently what I've seen is people are saying that, you know, the majority of graphics cards are dead and that, you know, if you're not, you know, that the 3070s, uh, you know, those are basically the standard now. If you don't have at least a 3070, you're washed. And, uh, you know, really you should be looking into these um, 12 gig cards you know, if your if your if your GPU doesn't have at least 12 gigs, you know what are you doing here? Um, and I personally believe that is being perpetuated uh, by proof of useful work uh, cryptocurrencies that are coming out right now. Uh, the Dynexes, the Flux proof of useful work, um, all these different things. You know, uh, where they're basically saying, as you can see here, uh, that. VRAM size is key, but speed is also considered. So the larger the VRAM, the better uh, you'll be able to essentially mine. Now, I want you to kind of take a step back here. Proof of useful work has only come around in the last couple months. And realistically, uh, with proof of useful work, it is only one, it's only a couple of different blockchains, a couple of different networks. It's not all of the networks. Pro you know, proof of work has not gone by the wayside and proof of useful work has proven that it's so much better and that it's just taking over. It's quite simply is not. And I personally believe that AI and the whole proof of useful work scene is a trend currently. And it's being perpetuated by a lot of people, but I feel like a vast majority of people that are getting into this haven't been in the cryptocurrency scene for a long time. And with that, we've seen a lot of different trends, you know, from NFTs to different kinds of staking and all this stuff. People get into it, it fails. And the only thing that seems to stay the same is proof of work mining. CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and ASICs, they always seem to stay the same. And so what I want to communicate is, once again, not financial advice, but I do not think that you need to stress out about buying the very best and the highest VRAM video cards, quite simply. I think that you should take a step back and you should look at the projects that you feel like you want to support and where you would be happy investing your money and potentially losing it. Now, personally, I was, you know, last, just this last bull run, you know, I had I had rigs with, you know, two gigabyte uh, RX 550 cards, two gigabyte cards, and I was making money off of them. And I had tons of four gigabyte cards, and of course I had eight gigabyte cards and six gigabyte cards. But even in, in the last bull run, even the two gigabyte RX 550 cards, you know, the Ant Miner L3s, you know, all these old pieces of hardware were still making money. And, you know, just everything was making money. You couldn't get your hands on the hardware. And so that's where I want to be able to take a step back and communicate whatever is in your budget is the best thing for you. Whatever network that you want to support is the best thing for you. 
don't worry about what these cryptocurrency YouTubers are building, you know, these Octominer servers with 12 graphics cards and they're all, you know, 4090s or, uh, you know, these proof of useful work servers that cost thousands of dollars, you know, with A4000 GPUs and gnarly dual CPUs and things like that. Don't worry about that stuff. Find projects that you want to support. Maybe it's Ravencoin, maybe it's Ethereum Classic, maybe it's, you know, whatever it is, jump into it and buy graphics cards that pertain to that network. If proof of useful work is your thing and that's something that's a direction you want to go, by all means, and there are inexpensive ways to do that and go about that. Um, so first off, I wanted to talk about the 1660. The 1660 comes in a couple different variations. You have the 1660, you have the 1660 Ti, you have the 1660 Super, you have the CMP 30X card. Um, they're all really virtually almost the same. They're slightly different. Um, but the main thing is, is that this is a six gigabyte card that people are saying are dead and they're going for about a hundred dollars these days, really inexpensive. I love these cards personally. And let's take a look. So we jumped over here to hashrate.no. And as you can see, these cards, uh, have some solid hashes and, have very low power usage. For instance, for Radiant, 340 mega hash at only 29 watts. That is low, low, low. Uh, you know, something like, um, let's see here, uh, on Dynex, doing 1600 hashes at 42 watts. Alephium, uh, 0.57 giga hash at 35 watts. Uh, you have Novo Network here doing 907 mega hash at only 29 watts. You have Neoxy here at 11, you know, 11 and a half mega hash at only 64 watts. So this card is really low powered and does deliver some hashes. So if, you know, if I was trying to put together a Radiant rig, why not go and pick up 10 or 12 of these cards, put a rig together and happily be mining Radiant, uh, you know, and actually you would be profitable. Look at this. You'd be making 11 cents revenue, 4 cents profit after power. And there's nothing wrong with that, and you shouldn't feel bad about that. Let's move over to some other cards. This is a little known card uh, that was great for uh, Ethereum mining, but it's considered outdated. It's only 8 gigabytes, so nobody's going to use it for proof of useful work. Um, there are better AMD cards out there, so people are moving on. Um, but this card is is $130 on AliExpress. It's a BC168 gigabyte AMD card. And I want to show you something, guys. On Kapow, as well as things like Dynex, where AMD cards just kind of rip, this card is a beast. And for the price point, it's it's awesome. Take a look at this. We have Game Pass Network. This thing is doing 20 mega hash at only 90 watts. We have Dynex. It's doing uh, th almost 3,200 hashes at only 63 watts. We have Neoxa here doing uh, 20 mega hash at only 90 watts. This this card is really cheap as far as graphics cards go, and it works great on those Kapow algorithms as well as Dynex. Most people would say that this card is outdated, old, don't buy it, don't waste your time. I think, why not? If you're looking to build around those networks, why wouldn't you just buy the hardware for it? Moving over, the 2070s. So many people are saying that the 20 series are just dead. Uh, they're, you know, they're useless for anything. And, you know, quite simply the same thing. If you're looking to build on a certain network that the 2070s work well on, you know, why not? For instance... The 2070 is the most profitable card on Conflux, which is a really great project if you haven't looked into it. Conflux is a wonderful project that I think that will do well in the bull run. Um, but this card, this this 2070 is doing uh, 50 mega hash at only 125 watts on Conflux. You're doing almost two Conflux a day. Now, this, this card will mine other coins as well um, and is solid, you know, you know, all amongst the board. Uh, there's many different coins that you can mine with this card. And look at that price point, $160, $150, uh, you know. So I think that the point I'm trying to make here is if there is a project that you like 
and there's a graphics card that's inexpensive and is in your price range and is in your budget and and that's the direction you want to go don't get off track because people are talking up 24 gigabyte gpus for proof of useful work and you know cpus that have 24 threads and things like that don't worry about that kind of thing build around the projects that you like build around the projects that you want to be a part of I can personally tell you from being through multiple bull runs that everything is profitable. Everything finds some level of profitability when Bitcoin is up, um, even things that you would never think. Now, it's just a matter of being successful on the networks that you are trying to support. Um, let me know what your comments are. Drop them down below. Uh, what cards are you mining on that maybe is taboo? I would love to hear it. Moving over to minor profitability. Now, this is not financial advice, but I personally think that we are headed into some dark times for cryptocurrency users. Um, I personally think that uh, cryptocurrency is going to start moving down more. Um, I just really don't think that we've seen the end of this bear market, and we're you know still almost a year out from the Bitcoin halving. So I think that we are headed down to some lower uh, price points. Um, as you can see with the prices today, uh, you know, kind of all red. So that's going to reflect uh, in the minor profitability. So currently we have the RTX 4090 most profitable on SkyDogeNet doing $1.03 a day, 63 cents after profit. We have the 6900 XT most profitable on Dynex doing 56 cents revenue, 26 cents after electricity. We have the CMP 170HX card doing 67 cents revenue, 24 cents after profit on Game Pass Network. We have the RX 6800 most profitable on Dynex doing 49 cents revenue, 22 cents after profit. We have the 6950XT AMD card most profitable on Sky Dogenet doing 50 cents revenue, 21 cents after profit. We have the Radeon 7 most profitable on Dynex doing 48 cents revenue, 18 cents profit. This is another old card uh, that is, you know, doing wonderfully on Dynex. Um, we do have the RTX 4060 Ti on Sky Doge Net doing 31 cents revenue, 18 cents profit. Uh, a lot of people are saying that this card is a dud. Do not buy it. Now, for me... Uh, with this card, I think that if you can get it at a good price point, why not? It's an efficient card. Why wouldn't you? Uh, we have the 3090 Ti, most profitable on Elysium, doing $0.48 cents revenue, uh, $0.15 cents after electricity. Uh, moving down, we have the 5700 XT, most profitable on Game Pass Network, doing $0.42 cents revenue, $0.14 cents profit. Shout out to the hobbyist miner who called out Game Pass Network like literally a month ago, and it is now pumping. Moving over to our ASIC miners, we have the Antminer D9, most profitable on X11 Dash, doing 24.56 a day, 17.72 after power. Uh, moving down, we have the Antminer L7, most profitable on Script on NiceHash, doing 14.34, 6.12 after power. We have the Antminer K7 on CKB, doing 13.38 a day, 5.99 after power. Uh, moving down, we have the Jazzminer X16-Q uh, on NiceHash, uh, doing 718 a day, 569 after power. We have the S19 XP Hydro on SHA-256 Bitcoin, doing 1777 a day, 493 after power. We have the Z15 Pro uh, on Equihash, most profitable on Pirate Coin, doing 884, 269 after power. We have the Antminer KA3 on Cadena doing 987 a day, 229 after power. And finally, we have the Antminer E9 Pro doing 669, or excuse me, 698, 170 after power. Thank you so much for hanging out with me to the end. I super appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If there's anything you want to hear me talk about, drop it down in the comments below. Um, I do have some different forms of contact if you do want to contact me personally um, That's up in the description of my channel and uh, thank you very much to everyone. We will see you tomorrow